Hey everyone, I'm so glad you joined us today. I'm excited to have a guest with me today, one of my dear friends, Chelsea Perry. She is amazing. She uh, and I met at Oral Roberts University when we were students. I don't know how long ago, <laughs> but um, I was immediately drawn to her because of her love for Jesus and her love for people. Uh, we also are both pastor's kids, so we have that in common, uh, but she has served in her dad's church for over 20 years in leadership. Uh, she's a speaker. She's a pastor. She's a leader. She is a writer. She's a creative. She's an artist. You guys, she is an amazing artist, and she just recently wrote a new book for the love of God, and I know it will encourage you. I've asked her to share a little bit about it, so Chelsea, welcome. I'm so glad you joined me today. <laughs> <laughs> you look amazing, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited. Thanks for having me on. So I finally finished my book. I'm so excited. I started it four years ago. And you being a writer, you know how what the process of writing is. It is so fun. And so God gave me this um, project and it just kind of poured out of my heart. There's all kinds of different topics. I went from A to Z and it's a devotional. It's um, kind of an interesting hybrid. I go from literally from A to Z, awesome. anxiety, breakthrough, clarity, depression, eating. Um, it just goes on and on li literally A to Z. So we, we go through like every single topic I've got, mm -hmm. like, I know it's really fun. And, but also it's really like I kind of pour out my heart, um, not kind of, I literally <laughs> pour, lay, lay it out there um, because I just feel like let's get into the deeper things. Um, and then I also, um, I don't know, I, I hope I hope to make people laugh a little bit and just be myself with it. So it's, yeah. it's pretty fun. And then it's full of scriptures too. So there's um, some scripture prompts, which... For those of you that don't know what those are, it's just to be able to speak the word over your life, which we both love. Yes. Yeah. It's so powerful declaring God's word over your life when you don't feel like, you know, getting up and doing what you're supposed to do or what God's calling you to do. Speaking life over yourself and over your situation makes such a powerful difference. Absolutely. And so what I did is I mean, I feel like that's completely changed me in different times. And as we we've talked about this, like growing up, we've, I've known to do that, but I've, I've forgotten about it in seasons. Mm -hmm. And when I, uh, when I've really needed the word, it's helped me so much, um, to be able to have it, um, available. And I, I tried to, pro I provided it in subjects. And so I wanted to, to be able to, um, have it like, it's so important, Sarah, to have it available when you really need it. And I remember there was a time for me when I was really afraid and I didn't know what to do. And I had like a really scary situation and I, I really was just overcome with fear, like completely overcome with fear. And I felt like I, I was just, I was like stunned, like completely tormented and shocked with fear. And it's like, I, I grew up knowing this, like that that the word is like what changes things. Yeah. And um it's it's like one of the things that gets us out of fear. But I felt like I I, I mean it's so ridiculous, but it's like I, I don't know if it's like the last thing you want to do or you just think that it won't work or whatever, but I had somebody else that was like speak the word over your situation. And I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right, that's right. And so I put the word all over my life about about fear. And so I put it in my car. I put it in my house. I put it all over my life in a practical form. And it changed my situation. It changed. Yeah. But the way that it changed my situation is it built my faith. That's and right. as you know, faith, like your faith gets built by you hearing the word. Yeah. And so it really helped me to remember. It helped me to remind myself what the word said, and it, yeah. it was, it was so, uh, stabilizing for me so good. in that time of torment because of a circumstance that was happening. That was a very real circumstance. Yeah. That's so good. 
you know, I mean, I've had to do that in my own life. Um, whenever I faced I, after my dad passed away, when I was having panic attacks, basically, yeah. no, I didn't know that's what they were, but I thought I was having a heart attack and I had, you know, was rushed to the hospital and I thought, here I am. I thought I was dying and it was the enemy really trying to bring this spirit of fear. And, um, it happened a couple times. This was 13 years ago. And I remember ask, you know, thinking, asking the doctor, what do I do? And they said, well, you just need to de-stress. And I'm thinking, great. <laughs> Tell <Thanks>. me how. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> so much. Just so helpful. <laughs> uh, they didn't really have anything to do, you know, for me in that time. And I, I prayed about it. And the Lord said that he really just you know, gently told me in a loving way, Sarah, you're doubting that I'm going to be good to you. Uh, oh. You're doubting my goodness. And oh. I just was like, Lord, forgive me. Like, I didn't even know just that that spirit of fear and doubt had crept in. And I had to, I mean, again, I know the word, but I had to renew my mind again, get into those promises and speak them over my life. Lord, I thank you. You are good. You That's do so love good. me. Your plans yeah. for me are good. You have a purpose and a plan for my life. I will live and declare the works of the Lord. I'll fulfill my assignment yeah. and just had to renew my mind with promises about faith and that I don't have a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So, so I mean, declaring God's word, it broke that spirit off of my life. And I, wow. I didn't have anything after that. That was 13 years ago, but it really was something I just had to really go back to the word and speak life over myself, over my situation and combat the enemy's lies, um, that were trying to take me away from my purpose, you know? Wow. That is so good. That is so rich. I mean, in your life, um, I was thinking about how, how have you walked out your own purpose? Cause you've been in a lot of different seasons. You've worked in a lot of different areas of ministry. I mean, tell me about, you know, how did you discover your purpose and how have you stayed the course over, um, these yeah. 20 years in ministry? Yeah. You know, I think that's such a good question. I feel like, um, I'm discovering it every day with God. I feel like as a Christian, our purpose is to be like him and to be a reflection of him. And, and it's, um, I feel like as a little girl, I had a desire to please him and to serve him. And I have so many dreams and aspirations in my heart, but the biggest thing of all is really to be a reflection of him. And so I have a lot of uh, things that I do, but all the things that I do are truly to be a reflection of him. And I know that that could sound like a Hallmark card, but I really mean it. Yeah. Like <laughs> it can sound Living. cheesy, but maybe I'm cheesy. Like I mean it like with all my heart. It's like, I do so many things. Like I, I draw and I, I write songs and I do these things, but they truly are to be a reflection of him. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I'm trying to walk out my purpose to be like him. And I think there have been seasons where I've be, I have been close to becoming like a jaded preacher's kid statistic. Like I've had moments of having angst and being hurt and having really like being at a crossroad and, and just like anybody else, like, I don't know anyone who hasn't, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you have it. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But I I've come to these moments where I'm like, God is good. I think people, people, um, People are people and God is good. And when I have separated the two, I've learned God is good. And, mm -hmm. and so I guess my, I've learned that my purpose is to follow him. So good. And all the things that I do um, are to serve him. And so I guess I'm learning to walk out my purpose every day. And so mm -hmm. I guess, I guess whatever I do is, is just to reflect him. So I guess I'm constantly finding my purpose. <laughs> I don't I know. I guess, I, I guess, I, I guess my overarching purpose would be like definitely to lead people to him, which I feel like I knew that as a little girl growing up in the church and with my family. Yeah. And so I was, I was so blessed to grow up with my family, with parents who led me to him, to God. Um, but like, as far as smaller things, like doing things for him, for God, um, those are things that I found out along the way, very unique ways, like uh, people 
yeah, it's been, it's been a process. <laughs> well, uh, and thing, then, oh, go ahead. I was going to say one thing I love about you is you are so sensitive to the Holy spirit uh, and you're obedient even when it doesn't make sense. And I've seen you operate like this. Like when God puts some, a word on your heart to share with somebody and you're just quick to obey and go give that word or, you know, give a, you know, something physical, like a ble- bless somebody, you know, I've watched you do that. And um, I love your sensitivity to the Lord. And I want to just, I mean, talk a little bit about this, about the yeah. importance of hearing God's voice and yeah. those little promptings and, and the rewards that happen, you know, yeah. and maybe some rewards we don't see because they're eternal, but just what you've seen in your steps of faith of hearing God's voice and being led by his spirit, what God has done. I think that it's a, pro- well, I was looking at your book. There <laughs> uh, has written a book, <laughs> how to hear God's voice. And I was highlighting in your book uh, and, and looking through it and it's so well done. And I love your, I was just looking at the second chapter, the ways God speaks. And it's so well laid out about his word. It's so good. His people dreams and visions. It's so good. Um, and it's just really good. I love it. <laughs> Um, I love it. Well, specifically on this topic. And I feel like, um, it's just such, it's such a relationship with him. And I think the further on that I go with God in my relationship with him, the more I understand his voice. Mm -hmm. And I write about this in, in the book about, um, about his sheep know the shepherd's voice Yes, and about how the more I I go on with the Lord, the more I feel like I know his voice. It's awesome. And, and I loved how you talked about the word, about the ways that God speaks. It's just really so, so good. I'm not, I'm just, it's just so good. You said his word, his voice, his people and dreams and visions, just cool. (laughs) I'm not pitching it. I just thought it was cool. (laughs) Um, but I would say for me, as far as hearing his voice, the things that have helped me, um, it would be listening to him and fear, fearing him too. Like I've, I was com- really confused about the fear of the Lord for a long time. I thought it was very strange because I'm like, if we're supposed to love God and he's such a, um, he's like our friend and we love him and he's so wonderful. Why do we fear him? But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. And so I started studying about that more and it's this reverential awe of him and respect. And I think it started that understanding of having respect for him. I think that I feel like that adjustment helped, helped me to that adjustment of respect helped me to start tapping into hearing him better. I don't know how to explain that in a clear, simple way, but it just kind of made me want to listen to him to be led by him more. Yeah. It's like, so you're my good. leader. You're my leader. Yeah. Well, and it's a place of surrender. Yeah. Where, that's, uh, that's I cool. need you. And apart from you, I can do nothing. I really yeah, can that's, do nothing that's, that, that's going to produce anything of value. I need you. So Lord, I want to hear you. I want to follow your lead. I want to um, be where you want me to be. And, uh, there's such a joy in that. There's such a fulfillment and a peace in that's so good, Sarah, learning to be in step with what he's calling us to do. So, Oh, that's so good. Yeah. But, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about, uh, you know, your own life, you're, well, you're in a new season of just being engaged. Yay. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. It's so exciting. Uh, because you've been waiting and trusting. And this is a thing about learning to hear God's voice is trusting him when you're waiting for this promise or a dream to be fulfilled and you haven't yet seen it. Talk a little bit about your process of waiting for God's best and now walking in the fulfillment of that. I mean, it, it was, um, not what I expected and the process of waiting. I kept thinking that I would get engaged at any time. I'm 43. And I kept thinking that, um, I would be, we all have our expectations of our path. 
and other people have expectations. So you have the perception of other people's expectations on your life. Right. And so your friends get married and then your friends have kids and then your friends have teenagers. <laughs> but then at one point you just decide, I don't care. I don't care what yeah. anybody else does. I'm good. I'm great. And then when that happens, then your husband comes. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> wow. But I had fun. I, I ended up once I was free, I truly became free of the opinions of other people. That's awesome. It, it was, and I, I feel like there was a shift in me mm. um, where I really wanted what God wanted more than I wanted what I wanted or what other people wanted. And it took, it took a long time, um, but it, I wanted God's desires for me. And I, I, this is a big conversation because a lot of people will say, you know, he will give you the desires of your heart and you could do whatever you want and God will bless it. And I've hear, I hear this a lot and I, I, I'm telling you, and we're not going there. I'm not going there, but I am telling you, God brought Brian and he just so far exceeds all my expectations, but he wasn't exactly what I expected, but he's exactly what I need. Mm. And Caleb, your husband, as you know, I've told you this years ago, said to me, you know, God's working on your husband and that's why he's not here yet. And I, that was when I was 25. Wow. And he said, it's timing. And it was a very strategic time in my life that he said that. And I needed that word and I've held on to that word. Wow. And I've dated, I've dated guys. I've um, had very wonderful, godly relationships and long-term relationships. And I, we just weren't right for each other, yeah. but this, you two were the pe first people we saw when we came together. That's wild. <laughs> I had one other friend I saw and then you two um, at an event, as you guys know, but it, it was just, it, it was so God ordained how God, God had been working on this. And as I've been telling people, you pray for something and you just, I just trusted it, that God was working on it. And then if he wanted me to be single, I was okay with that. I got to the point where I was like, maybe it's even better. I'm single because I can do more, you know, I, I can work for, I could do more for God. I was just, I let it, I just kind of let it loose. And then, and I, he, then all of a sudden he shows up and I didn't even know it was him at first. I didn't recognize him and he didn't recognize me and we just become friends. And all of a sudden it was like, he, there he is. Wow. And so I think the encouragement for me, for other people, not only for your mate, but also for other things that you're believing for is yes. don't, don't fear and don't uh, give up. Like don't lose heart that whatever it is that you're believing for God is working on. Yeah. So good. If you're believing for your kid that is out there that, um, that might not be acting the way that you're, that, that you want them to, if you're believing for whatever it is that you're believing for, yeah. like just because you don't see it right now, doesn't mean God's not working on it. It's powerful because this, this just like showed up in my life and I had been believing for him for years. And if you really know the whole story, it is a crazy story. Like I'm getting the last name of one of my very best friends from childhood. Like he's the cousin of somebody I grew up with from be like infancy but we didn't know each other like and the reason we didn't know each other is because he grew up out of state so it's, it's a crazy story we're actually going to write of course we're going to write a book about it <laughs> <laughs> I love it because <laughs> you can't sum it up in, in like a quick story it's so crazy the story what God did only God God it's, is so it's just wild <laughs> but you but that's it. what God's doing yeah. behind the scenes in all these people's yes. lives yeah and you came to that place of surrender saying, God, if I don't ever get married, I remember coming to that place, <laughs> Lord, if I don't ever get married, I just want to do what you want me to do. I surrender my desires to you. And, and it's funny how sometimes when we get to that place, then God <laughs> begins to bring the fulfillment of the dream or the desire. But I feel like, um, that you should pray for those that are waiting for a promise and waiting sure. for something, a dream or a vision to come to pass. Because I think a lot of people are there, or maybe you're in a process of 
you know, walking out something and you're trusting God is going to bring the fulfillment. Would you just pray and speak sure. to that? Um, Absolutely. That dream that's in people's heart. If it's for a mate or whatever dream that God's put in your heart, I believe God wants to encourage you in the waiting to trust him that he is working and he's Absolutely. all things to work together for good. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> God, I just lift up everybody that's with us today. I just ask God for all the things that are unfulfilled promises that they are seeking you for right now. I thank you, God, that those things that they are calling on you for that you are working on. I just pray, God, for hope to be stirred up in them that you are working on it. I thank you, God, that uh, as as they are praying and that they are seeking you, that you are working on it, that you are always working, that you have been working and that they can fear not. I just say fear not. And I just pray, Lord, for um, I just pray, God, for peace. I pray for peace on all the people on the other end of this prayer right now. And I just ask God for uh, whatever it is that they're in need of. I thank you, Lord, that as you are at work that I just pray, I thank you that you are not the God of confusion. Mm -hmm. And as they are seeking you, that you are answering them. And I thank you, Lord, that all those times that I was wondering what was going on, you were working. And all those times I was seeking you, you were working. And all those times I was asking questions, you were working. And I just pray, Father, for all the people on the other end of this today. I thank you, God, that you are working. And I just pray right now, we are in agreement with you that are out there right now listening to this. I just want to speak to your heart. God is working. And God, I just thank you, Father. We lift up all these concerns, all these prayers, all these requests to you. And I just speak, peace be still on these requests. Peace be still on all of these worries and concerns. We cast them all on you. And we just invite you into these uh, issues requests, prayers. We thank you, God, that you are working. You have been working and you are always working and you will be working. And those that are looking for a mate, I thank you, Father, that you have the right person for them at the right time. In Jesus' name, and we trust you for it. And we thank you, God, that the right time, it's all happening at the right time. And we give it to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So good. God is working. I believe, you know, that scripture of in Philippians that he's working all things together for good. He's perfecting those things that concern us. Yes. And he is fulfilling what he's promised. It may not be on our timetable, but yes. he's faithful to complete the good work he started in us. Amen. And so um, we just want to encourage you. I pray this encouraged you, those of you that are watching today, that yes. God is working in the waiting and that you can trust him. He is good. And his yes. plans for you are good. So you can trust yes. God's timing and believe that he's working in the midst of all that you're walking through. And Chelsea, just tell us um, before we wrap up, tell us how they can get your book and hold it yes. up. <laughs> if you, yes, go to Amazon and you can get it. Uh, you can get For the Love of God on Amazon. Awesome. I love it. So good. And more, more books to come. So Yay, we're excited yes, yes. <laughs> to, to see I your love you, story. <laughs> I love you too. Well, everybody check out Chelsea's new book and thank you so much, Chelsea, for joining today. Thanks for sharing your heart and your wisdom. And uh, thanks everybody for joining me. I pray this encouraged you and that you leave inspired that God's working and that he loves you. His plans for you are good. And we pray that you have a great day.